Well, welcome to an episode of ToddFun.com, and I really wasn't going to shoot a video for this. I was just repairing this uh, very, uh, essentially this is a vintage, older style uh, uh, alarm clock for a kid's room. It's been in our family for a couple of decades, and um, and it is the original Scooby-Doo game, so it's really nice. Um, but it had problems and I was just going to fix it and it looks like there's going to be a circuit repair involved now so I figured I'd start shooting. Um, the original problem was is these bits of plastic you see over here all just got old and cracked and what they do is when this uh, top of the alarm clock goes on it, uh, it just holds these circuit boards in place and so you can push the buttons and stuff like that. And so my plan there was just a quick fix. I just drilled some holes, put the circuit board with the buttons in there and then I didn't even put nuts in there, I just uh, drilled small enough holes so that it could thread onto the circuit board, uh, cut its own threads. That worked out real well, but uh, but um, the clock, you don't, you're probably not seeing the clock quite right because it's kind of flickering, um, but I, it looks pretty steady for me, just not so in the camera I guess. Uh, but it's dim, and so something's definitely wrong, and so this just kind of pops out of there. And uh, I've got it running on a on my Variac right now because I turned it up kind of slow to make sure it was good. So it's drawing way too many amps. It's 45 milliamps. It's that's a bit much for a little clock like this. And it's such a cute little clock. I still want to try and save it. Um, so the first thing is we're gonna have to do some looks at the circuit board to see if there's anything we can fix on this old school board. So this cable is just for the buttons, they're doing fine in there now, um, but there's something with the display, it seems like it's being starved of current, so I do have some sus sus suspect of components in here. But just to take a look at things first, let us uh, I haven't checked voltages or anything yet, the first thing I do is I just look for anything that looks damaged, and uh, we'll just zoom in real tight, and you can see there's a lot of, there's a lot of heat damage in this area here. But that's pretty much these. Uh, this is the uh, or this is the transformer coming in, and this is the center tap rectifying circuit here. Um, and these uh, diodes have gotten hot over the ages. I'll probably just pull those out and replace them with fresh ones that have a, a good high current rating, um, so that it pro hopefully won't be heating up so much anymore. Because uh, this isn't burnt or anything. It's just a lot of heat damage from those diodes. Um, but I'll, I'll do that, but they did, these I did test, and they did test fine, but like I say, I'm going to replace them. I suspect uh, nothing else on the board visually, um, looking over the board, everything else looked fine, no traces were burned, nothing like that. Um, so when I started then checking for temperature, uh, I was looking for any parts that were feeling like they were getting too hot, because this thing is drawing you know, 50 milliamps. And this transistor right here, with my fingers on, it was getting too hot to touch when the circuit was powered on. So obviously either something is uh, draining too much current through this or this is uh, providing too much resistance um, to the next part of the circuit. So that's going to be my first step. I'm going to replace these uh, diodes just because they've been heat damaged over the years. And then I'm going to pull out and test this transistor. So I want to check a few more voltages here. Um, this is actually going to be um, volts AC because I want to see what's coming in on the uh, on the transformer, and that should be between this point. Turn the circuit on real quick. That should be between this point, which comes to this point, and then this diode over here, or this base, of this diode here. So we should be getting some AC signal here. And we get about 5 volts AC. Okay, RMS. And then the other one, the other side of this leg is going to be exactly the same. And it is going to be right here. That's interesting. It's only running two. And that is definitely the other side. So why would uh, why would one side be getting drawn down? This is five. Mm. 
5 volts and then this top of this one is where I traced out the other one, yeah huh, two and a half, well maybe that's part of our problem, it's drawing down on one side and not another, but uh, it's good to know so we of course expect this to be a digital alarm clock chip and when we pull up the data sheet on that LM8560 it is indeed uh, so I, you, you put, try and grab your data sheet for that. This is sort of a sort of a block diagram, semi semi schematic of what's going on, and that will help a lot for tracing down what you want for uh, voltages. We do have an actual block diagram um, if you want to get more into the functionality of the clock. Uh, but the front uh, the front page is is pretty decent. It tells you the pinouts of your chip. Um, from what I'm reviewing, the, this is going to essentially be the ground, this is going to be plus, you're going to have 60 hertz signal coming in for the clocking, uh, and it's going to uh, run on uh, between 7.5 and, and 14 volts is, is where this, is going to, this chip wants to run, and using about 10 milliamps. So the whole thing using 50 milliamps, eh, it seems a bit high still, be, because, but there is a lot of LEDs there, but I still think it should be closer to... 30 milliamps or 25 milliamps for running a clock like this. So something's still drawing too hard and of course I think the reason we had the imbalance in um, the transformer side is because the cathode is connected to is connected to one side and so you got one you got the cathode coming over and it's just you know I noticed that some of the some of the uh, display was bright and some of it was dark and I think one side is just drawing down too hard and so we'll see if we can't fix that. So between pin uh, 15 and 20 we should see the voltage that the chip is using. Um, we gotta go ahead and switch this to DC and we'll turn on the power and yeah it's still got a few dim sections. It seems like these colons are bright but when it draws on the other ones it definitely is dim it is definitely very dim okay so we'll try and go 20 so this is 15 and there we go 16 17 18 19 20 oops yeah it looks like it's going 7 it's yanking down every time that clock blinks, but and 7.5 is minimum for this chip. So yeah, something's. This is gonna have to be up around uh, 10, maybe even nominally 12, before this is functioning at full full potential and brightness. Funny, it's running as well as it is actually. Okay, uh, my uh, soldering iron and a desoldering plunger. And a little solder wig for a little extra cleanup is all I need to get those parts off. So all of the components tested good on the board with the exception of uh, one little capacitor didn't test good on the board but it does test good once taken off and that does happen. Um, you can see better now the heat damage I think. Let's see if I zoom in. There. You can you can really see the heat damage around those uh, regulator parts, and uh, so though they test good and they test perfectly good even off, I've got them down here. Um, they've been in there for 20 years, running for most of that time probably, so they test fine. But no, I've got I've got uh, brand new over here. These diodes are. Uh, rated for slightly more voltage but same current so no big deal but these are the same wattage um, resistors in size this is a, a replacement cap the same size so they're just they're not any better they're just new I guess and then I keep this is a tip I keep a lot of spare parts and uh, salvage parts uh, these are all new parts in little uh, these little yeah, the little bag you can buy these bags by the box load and I write on them what they are so I can quickly find them um, but I don't recommend writing them with a sharpie or anything else because it doesn't stick it tends to start to wipe off after a while um, so what I found is if you just take some clear 
masking tape or you know just just clear tape scotch tape stick the scotch tape on and then use a uh, you can use a finer point uh, sharpie to write on the scotch tape and then that does hold that doesn't seem to rub off or wear or get old and it sticks on real good and then I don't lose these salvaged parts and or new parts I can find them without losing like some of them these rub off pretty good like right now these are looking okay but they, they don't always and I got a, a a splattering of all types of transistors I've purchased in bulk over the years I keep around so I will re I will replace the transistor of course that's suspect as well I've taken it out it was right here um, but from what I can tell from the schematic let's go ahead and just see if we can take a look at the schematic and I also looked at the trace it's just going to be driving the uh, the the alarm essentially the alarm speaker and make it go uh, 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 uh. so in the alarm isn't even on and that thing's getting hot so I'm gonna leave it out when I put everything back together uh, so there won't be an alarm but again if it's somehow damaged or draining or something else is is able to pull it down like that at least uh, it'll validate that display is is working in bright and then I can find a, a replacement transistor and see if it fixes it or start looking for what else might be everything else does test all the zeners test all the other caps test on board could have a problem with this chip um, wouldn't really know I guess I don't think I would have a problem back in here in the buttons or or underneath here though there is possibility I guess so there's the replacement so far um, I put this new stuff on and you can see I left some standoffs uh, space uh, just so these would have a little bit more airflow on them um, because they are pretty much rated for the same power um, well, those diodes are a little bit better voltages, but I don't have the transistor in. I do have the AC mains from the transformer hooked up. And the only thing missing is that transistor, so I'm thinking it'll come on. Uh, this will be our test. I'll switch it on. I had thought of powering it off of DC, like I had said earlier, I believe, in the video. Uh, but I needed that clock signal, and I could have probably provided the clock with my function generator. And, you know, there's another chip over here on the back of this little cutout, and I'm not sure exactly what it expects. But I might try that, I might not. But this is off of mains. So, here we go. Well, that is definitely brighter. There's without, yeah, that is definitely brighter. I wonder how much current this is drawing off the mains. Let me flip to milliamps. Yeah, hmm. Not only is it brighter, um, I have an inline current meter and it's only drawing about, it's kind of bouncing as it's flashing. Let's turn the flashing off by setting an hour here. So now it's not flashing. Now it's it's a nice steady 26 milliamps. So yeah, that's that is definitely the, it is something either the transistor or something after the transistor is drawing it down because it's a, it's a lot. It's it's very bright now. It looks like a normal clock now, and I could easily see that across the room now. Okay, so I guess see if I can find a matching transistor in my pile here, and because without it, I'm not going to have an alarm. What good's an alarm clock without an alarm, right? Well, I dug through my pile and I found the transistor transistor that had the closest characteristics. Um, tried to go a little bit over if possible so that it doesn't get actually a better performing transistor um, for this. But it's just driving a speaker. It's it's going to drive a little a little eight ohm buzzers, so it doesn't really matter that much unless something goes wrong or starts drawing current down someplace. This is reading the, uh, the, the current in milliamps from the AC mains that's going to be going through the transformer and, 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 and through this transformer and into here. And when we didn't have that transistor, we had a nice stable 25 um, uh, millivolts, which was reasonable in a bright display. Um, and so now we'll see if this uh, speaker, um, the transistor that powers the speaker, is going to work for us. So let's turn on the power. Here we go. Uh, turn off the light, of course. No, now we're back up to a lot of current again. 
so that's not good. Um, it's almost twice the current with that transistor in there, so something's definitely amiss. Even if I get it to not blink, it's uh, still twice the current and it's a lot dimmer now. You can actually see the LEDs are kind of faded. So something, uh, the transistor did test, by the way, that this transistor that I took out did test very fine. So something else, once this is in, I bet you this is getting warm too. Yeah, yeah, it's getting, it's definitely getting way too, I mean, I can put my finger on it, but it's way too warm for a transistor. So it's, something's drawing the current down, and I'm not sure what. So let's pop it back out again and see what we can find, if we can find a short or something. Well, we've made some progress. That transistor, uh, the original transistor was good, it was just getting hot because something else was shorting. And what I did is I traced the voltages with the power on, and I got to basically everything was getting drawn down by this guy over here. And uh, the circuit's on right now, and you can see it's doing the 26 milliamps now, it's nice. I'll go ahead and turn it off. And what this is, is it's literally they, they basically sliced out a piece of the board over here. And they've got this little chip on board, you see, and it's got just little solder tabs. And what they do is they slide it in there on the board and then they just cross, they just uh, short those tabs. And um, this alarm clock of course works perfectly fine with just that LM, um, what is it, 8060 chip in here. It, it doesn't need this. This is the cute little onboard thing that makes that just makes it sound like a horn beep. It basically modulates the speaker between these two transistors on either side and it modulates the speaker so it sounds more like a Volkswagen van horn going arc 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 rather than what you would typically get out of the chip which is just you know e -e 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 -e. and so that's all this little chip is and it has definitely shorted out. I stick it in there and it, as soon as I put this in it draws the circuit down from about 13 volts on on all the rails to about 6 volts. And of course all that current is dropping through that one transistor that's working to death. And that's probably what explains a lot of that burntness on the board is whenever this guy decided to burn out and become a partial or complete short, it was cooking those power regulation parts. So it'll be fine now that I've taken it out and I'll research the data sheet because the data sheet already tells you how to use um, this LM8560N chip to uh, uh, to power your to power your your uh, alarms. So I I mean I can I can I can ba basically just follow this this data sheet for the chip and get it going. Get, it'll get it back going. You know, neat 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 for wake up. But you won't get that cool horn sound. You won't get that like a like a car horn, which is sad, but there is just uh, there's just no way of fixing a chip on board. Um, I might research a little bit and decide if I can figure out how to put my own modulation chip in there if it's not too big. Um, but at first, I'll get it working so that it's just a regular alarm again. Um, you, you'll see the display is fine now. Uh, turn the overhead off. So we got a nice bright display again. So and we got the currents down. So we're good to go now. We just uh, get it get it wired up again, get a regular honking, regular beeper going, and then maybe someday I'll get ambitious and replace this with something that modulates the horn a little bit more like this used to do. So that's the fix. Um, I'll wrap it up with a final demonstration of it working um, as a regular alarm. And back in a minute. So here's our hack solution ready for some testing. Um, what I'm going to do is pin 16 is the is the alarm pin that's coming out of the 85060 um, clock chip, and it's my plan is go through a 2.2k kind of like what their diagram had, and then down through a 4.7k to I put chassis but just ground. Um, in the in their diagram they had a capacitor across here, but we don't want that because we just want this beeping on-off pulse signal to turn this transistor on and off. 
The transistor will act like a switch, hard on, hard off, as this signal comes out of here, allowing me to draw uh, an adjustable current load, um, essentially volume control, through this adjustable resistor through the speaker. And then you'll get that same on off, eh, 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 eh. Uh, but you can control the volume this way and you can draw um, a lot more current than, than this alarm pin could do. You could run a small speaker like an 8 ohm speaker right off of this pin and it would work. It wouldn't be as, very, as loud as you want. Um, it would be kind of quiet, but it would work. But this is this, this just circuit's going to work better for me. Um, on the board what it looks like is we, we really had to hack the solution in um, because we had that modulating chip you know that used to be sitting up in the corner up here and its job was to to control this transistor, the, the base emitter collector right there, and make the speaker go on and off. And previously, you know, we were fighting with another transistor over here. This is the one that was overheating, the base emitter collector. Its job was just to provide power to the modulating chip. The modulating chip, in turn, used the signal from the clock pin to uh, to do its own modulation of the speaker. So now we're, we're hacking things up a little bit. We're, we, we've cut a trace over here to get rid of that transistor that used to be overheating. So essentially it's completely out of the loop. It doesn't even do anything anymore. Um, we left the, the speaker hooked up to where it was. We've uh, cut a few things out here. We've taken a zener diode out that we didn't need in this place. We've taken the capacitor out here that we didn't need anymore because that was, that was going to draw the, that wasn't going to allow our clock, our clock, I mean our pulsing alarm signal to get through. Uh, but it will now. Um, then we basically essentially just said, okay, we got a zener going from the from the clock or from the alarm pulsing signal over to here, and we can go from here over to here with a jumper wire on the other side of the board. I'll flip it over and show it to you. This went up into this original modulating chip, so there's a short. I put a short right here, so it comes like it came like it's basically mimicking. It's coming out of that modulating chip. That then in turn had uh, a resistor already going over to the base. It wasn't the size I wanted, so I replaced it with a 2.2K. And then I just hacked in a uh, 4.7K to ground from the base. So this is the transistor, the uh, collector, uh, base, and emitter. Um, and the clock is going to get power, um, which there's a, I've cut a trace, I've cut, uh, the, cut back the uh, solder mask here, and I'm going to solder in in a moment. But... Right now, for testing, we're going to jumper from VCC. This is the v VCC pin right here. I'll put a jumper through an adjustable uh, resistor over to the top of the speaker. The speaker will then drive through the speaker, through the transistor to ground as that pulsing signal comes through. Um, quick look at the other side of the board, if you care. So uh, this is the signal pin here. It goes through this zener diode. It now goes through a jumper instead of instead of a uh, resistor. Um, I took off this capacitor because we didn't want that being that pin being pulled to ground or through a capacitor charging up, essentially filtering out our signal. And then I got a, the 2.2 goes over here to the base, um, and that's the hack. Other than this, pretty much all this over here has been the circuits have been cut over here, so that doesn't work either anymore. It's not necessary for this standard clock signal. And I put in um, a 1K pot, 10 turn 1K pot, and start off at 1K, and then I can get uh, a louder and louder, and I know that I'm, I'm going to watch my currents and, and voltages while I do this. So we'll show that little setup and demonstration, uh, finding the right resistance uh, values that I want. Here's our testing setup. Um, between this black clip and this yellow we have the oscilloscope so we can see the voltage response uh, across the speaker. Between the green and the yellow we have our adjustable uh, 1K pot so we can control our volume and essentially the uh, current load. And we're monitoring the current uh, through this uh, with the fluke. Uh, so let's power it up and take a look at all that. Okay, the alarm should be going off any minute now. There you go, the alarm just turned on. And uh, over here we're reading the current going through the, the one, currently a 1K um, adjustable pot in the speaker. And it's uh, not bouncing up and down on us, but uh, this is reading the instantaneous true RMS AC plus DC um, current. Now that's necessary because it's a pulsing current. You can't just do regular RMS. You gotta have AC, DC, AC plus DC RMS. To know what your equivalent DC is, and we'll put this into uh, min-max mode in a minute. But we'll just watch it now. Over here, our line is coming in. It's up a couple millivolts uh, for the line uh, volts, 
And then um, over there we have, uh, we might as well just take one quick look at our oscilloscope. Uh, and we, we can see that's the pulsing that we are hearing, that we can physically see it. If we wanted to, we could zoom in on the pulse train a little bit there. And we could see there's, there's pulse train between those uh, breaks. But uh, for the most part, you can just watch the uh, sweep mode and get a good idea of, of what it's doing. Uh, back to the goal at hand, which is adjusting this, uh, adjusting this pot to get the loudness we want. Right now it's not very loud to me, that probably wouldn't even wake me up. Um, but we'll go ahead and turn this up and find out what the minimum resistance is we dare use while we monitor our current. And I would like to keep the current under about 35 milliamps, 40 milliamps tops. So it's going to get louder. getting about as high as I want to go because I'm seeing some spikes up there above 40. I come back a little bit. It's a little high for me. Yeah, I'd be about as high as I dare go. So we can put it in min-max mode now. And uh, we can see we're getting um, about a... Well, let's zoom in for you. In about 47 for max milliamps, AC, DC, RMS, and a min about 24. Averaging about 35 milliamps. That's about the most I'd want to draw. And it's plenty loud right now. You can get that in a box and it's going to be even louder yet. Uh, let's measure the resistance and see what our minimum resistance setting should be. That way we can put a, a cheaper adjustable 10 or 1K pot with an inline uh, minimum resistance of whatever this is currently set at. So we measure just the, uh, we're just using this adjustable resistor, we just measure that resistance we were using and it's uh, 248 ohms. And um, I'm going to, um, that was a little bit loud, I pulled a, a 270 ohm resistor. That's going to go in line with a piece of, it's not salvage stock, but it's like one of those grab bag um, 1K pots. It's a lot cheaper than the, than the 10K, or the 10 turn pot. Um, but it's a 1K uh, pot. It will, I can mount in the, on the side someplace that will give good volume adjustments. So if you don't want louder volume, you can turn it all the way down to zero. And because this will be in line, this 270 ohm will keep you from going any lower and browning out your clock through basically too much current through your, through your speaker. And using this design, um, I'll put a link to this design in the show notes. Um, I built it based on someone else's design. I'd actually use this to just come down from mega ohms all the way down and I got down to 267 with just using this and not using the 10k 10 turn pot and so that came real close to what the 10k pot came in fact my final resistance I'm using is, is 270 and uh, you can see it does a pretty good job it, it, you know this is reading uh, 2, 268.14 that dials in pretty good I mean you can't complain about that at all so yeah that'll definitely be our resistance so really all we have to do now is uh, put it all back in the box uh, wire up, uh, wire up the, uh, the the resistors for the volume, like I just demonstrated, and we have a working alarm clock. Let's. I'm just going to put it together and show you the final product. Well, there it is, all back together again. I'm just pleased as peach to have this thing back up and running nice again. The display is nice and bright again. The alarm works again. Uh, you'll see some fading in and out of the of the display because of the way the camera reacts to the fluorescence. But we'll turn the fluorescence off in a minute to see how the night light. It's got a really cute night light too. Uh, I just love the original Scooby Doo gang, the original Mystery Machine. Um, this is this is old vintage vintage clock kind of. It was a real easy repair elect, uh, circuit wise because the electronics were so old. Um, so it was definitely worth the little bit of effort it was for that. Um, I. Uh, I, I did change my idea on the uh, on the volume control here for the alarm. I went with a smaller pot uh, because the milliamps are so low and this is a nice easy you're only going to probably set it once and then you're going to probably leave your volume for your for your alarm. So that was a better solution for that. Um, the only thing that would have been nicer is if I would have you know taken and ordered up a, uh, a log style uh, 1k pot because humans here logarithmically 
which means that when you start turning this up, it seems like it doesn't really change the volume until you get near the end and all of a sudden the volume gets really high really quick. Well, that's a result of our hearing, not the pot. The pot is linear. And if I wanted it to be more, you know, basically seeming like it was getting louder, in, in a, if I wanted it to seem like it was getting loud linearly, I would have to get a logarithmic uh, scale uh, style pot. But, you know, you're, only, you're just going to tweak it a little bit, get it to that last little setting you want, and you're just probably going to forget it anyway um, after that. Uh, just it's just a it's, it, with these screws holding the board on now because those plastic bits broke. Now everything sits. The buttons all work real good again. Um, everything turns on and off. This is the the night light. You can kind of well, we'll turn off the lights to see the night light, but it's in there. Um, it 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 has just a brilliant snooze. I just love the snooze on this. This is the snooze. You just anywhere you want. You just watch the tires down here. That's the snooze. The tires are actually independent of the vehicle. And that's the snooze. Is that just brilliant or what? Well, let's uh, let's take a look at the night light and uh, wrap it up. So I'm going to turn off all the lights here. It's going to get kind of dark. Um, that's pretty darn dark, but now you can see what the display looks like to me. And there's the night light. <laughs> Is that the cutest little night light? You can see the gang in there driving their little mystery machine. Um, isn't that just something? That's just a that's a money shot there. That's great. Well, you test the alarm and show that working. There. Yeah. It's pretty hard to hear because that's the lowest setting. Um, but we'll bring it around and I've drawn in like a volume scale. And so we can turn up the... Turn it up. Yeah, that's loud enough to wake me up, that's for sure. And the snooze button? Is that brilliant or what? And it is battery backup, it's got a 9 volt battery, and I already tested it does, uh, it's fully functional in that uh, it will use, it doesn't have the AC at that point, so it uses an RC circuit to keep a, a rough estimate of the time so your clock doesn't lose uh, its correct time. But it will, it will drift if it's on battery for too long. But it's just for brownouts and short outages is all that battery is for. The display won't work on the battery, that's by design, but it will keep the time inside the chip and the battery will uh, set the alarm off. So the alarm will still go off and will still uh, wake you up in the morning even though you don't have power. So that's it's just, a, just a wonderful little old vintage uh, cl clock, clock. <laughs> not a radio, just a clock. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining and seeing how I uh, hack, did a hack repair on uh, this nice little clock. Now, whenever I make or hack something, or especially you know redesign some circuitry, I don't just put it into service right away. And so here's a tip: if you do do stuff like this, uh, run stuff like this in, you know, in a garage, or don't put it in your house and leave it unattended because you, you might you, you Murphy will get you. You may think you didn't do anything wrong, and I'm sure I didn't do anything wrong, but I'm not going to go sticking this in my child's room and just hoping it doesn't start on fire. I'm, I'm confident it won't, but I'll leave it in the garage for a week, and I'll, I'll just leave the alarm set every day, and every day when I go to work, I'll come out here, the alarm will be going off, um, and I'll just run the clock like that for a week, making sure that if there's a fire, at least it's in the garage. If it's something I'm a little less sure of, I'll actually, I've done it many times, I'll plug it in outside, and I'll let it run outside for a week, um, or, in, or you know, if it's not, it doesn't rain much in the desert, but you know, someplace where it won't get wet if it does have weather. But uh, yeah, I do that a lot because I just, you know, I've I've made mistakes enough in my life to know that you make mistakes when you don't think you're making mistakes, and that's when you, you don't want to have that. When you do them in the electronics, uh, things can go wrong, and so this will stay on the garage, and we'll run it for a while, and uh, make sure it's all good. Um, I probably, I mean, I like it so much, I'll probably hack a little bit more on it someday. Um, I'm probably going to go in there and uh, stick my own uh, custom-built Arduino-compatible uh, bo chip board in there. And uh, I'll probably uh, configure it to uh, play the Scooby-Doo voices for the alarm. Uh, maybe some special sayings or something. I've done that for other people, for hacks, for things other people have done for Halloween. And I could easily modify that and stick it in here. There's lots of space in this van for that. And then the speaker will say things, you know, like ruby ruby doo and stuff like that. And, and that would be even funner. And because I can't ever have that uh 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 back, you know, like, which was a really cool alarm that, uh, that they had, that honking alarm song. 
but I can do even better, you know. And so when I do that, maybe I'll share the circuit and the, the build of that in another video. And then, uh, and so you can build those things too, as well as uh, as uh, understanding how to how to customize your own little sound chips and stuff like that. Um, so brilliant, brilliant. I love the fact they saved this. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for joining. Thumbs up if you liked the video.